Information Act request to NIST by a registered structural engineer for calculations and analysis substantiating the walk-off failures of horizontal girders from their seats at columns 79 and 81 was denied by NIST with the claim that releasing this data might jeopardize public safety. How could it possibly jeopardize public safety to tell people in the industry, engineers who were responsible for designing these buildings, how this failure could occur? That implies that anybody who requests or demands these calculations is a threat to public safety. Science is never secret when it's done right. Science is a way of finding out that is self-correcting and involves many people. Science isn't science unless it's published, unless it's openly published and made available for criticism. The thing that's most important about science is that it's a way of knowing. And it's a way of knowing that anyone can participate in. At the end of any kind of science activity, people will agree that they have collected evidence that, that illustrates a hypothesis, and if it, the evidence is contradictory to the hypothesis, you have to, one has to abandon that hypothesis and look for another one. The explanations from FEMA and from NIST don't add up, but there is enormous circumstantial evidence, circumstantial and actually physical evidence as well, that would lead us to a different conclusion. And the conclusion is controlled demolition. It was a shame that after the collapse that a forensic unit, a forensic engineering unit didn't go into the debris and try to find at that time why the towers had collapsed. I'm sure there was other evidence uh, that, that could have given a better indication at the time that there was something else wrong. Any honest investigator would be looking at this and looking for explosives and so forth. And this investigation didn't go there. They just would, would not look for explosives. There have been explosives found in the dust, in the debris, but this has been uh, the work of independent researchers, not NIST. And the, the physical chemistry of everything that I wrote about is consistent with no other hypothesis. And all of the testimony of eyewitnesses, all of the video evidence supports only controlled de uh, demolition as the cause of all three World Trade Center buildings' uh, destruction. You don't have to be a chemical engineer to question that official story. It's very, very obvious. Both Building 7 and the towers were brought down by demolition. It couldn't have been any other possible way. That conclusion I, I come to based upon First of all, my training, uh, my education, uh, particularly uh, my experience in uh, uh, blowing up uh, uh, major structures that had been designed to withstand blasts. The uh, experience that I had uh, gained uh, in the military and as an engineer uh, was irrefutable that those buildings were brought down by explosives. Well, the American Society of Civil Engineers was brought into this investigation early on, issued a report without any significant forensic examination. For the American Society of Civil Engineers to ignore those events is extremely disturbing and uh, is a violation, in my opinion, of their professional code of ethics. The only thing that you can say about their participation in this is that it must have been an orchestrated cover-up. So the preconceived notion of NIST is that there's no evidence for explosives and so there's no point in looking. Uh, that is the most unscientific thing that you can possibly think of, not to look because you don't expect to find evidence and in fact the evidence is overwhelming. They state these conclusions for which there's virtually no evidence and then they ignore conclusions that can be drawn from the evidence. It is my opinion as a former 12 Bravo combat engineer, well trained in the use of explosives, that this building, all three buildings were brought down as a, control, as a result of controlled demolitions. Elevator company personnel had 24-7 access to the shafts, which is the normal time in the evening and early morning hours when they perform their maintenance. 
and uh, of course uh, their access to the elevator shafts gave them total access to the surrounding core columns, the interior of the core columns. It took some kind of uh, consciousness raising on my part before I was willing to look at the, at the possibilities. And really, you need to go where the evidence leads. We know we've been lied to about 9-11. We don't know for sure who did it. We don't know exactly how they did everything. And that's why we need a new investigation to find out. But in the meantime, there are things we do know. We do know that there was a massive cover-up, that there was evidence hidden and destroyed. And given these conclusions, what remedy do these professionals recommend? The three skyscrapers were taken down in controlled demolition. And all we're asking for is a new investigation. And the NIST also will investigate the dust for remaining explosives. At Firefighters for 9-11 Truth, that's what we're asking for, is we're asking for an investigation that follows national standards. I'm Jody Gibbs. I was licensed for general building and heavy construction as well as architecture over 35 years ago. I was educated at Yale University, the Harvard Graduate School of Design, the Yale Graduate School of Art and Architecture, and I taught at MIT as an adjunct faculty for a number of years in the Graduate School of Architecture. My reasons for uh, looking and demanding and urging people to uh, see that we get a judicial investigation are really very simple. No high-rise steel structure has ever been destroyed by a fire in the history of construction. We have eyewitness testimony of firemen, policemen, news reporters, and occupants of the building to explosions, an enormous number of eyewitness testimonies. Fourth, the buildings fall at a speed uh, which can only occur if the structure has been removed, the vertical structure. Large, multi-ton beams were hurled hundreds of yards laterally. Gravity works vertically, not laterally. We also now have the evidence of thermite and thermate explosives. Most of these things were not even mentioned in the 9-11 Commission report. It's for this reason I urge all architects and engineers to look into the matter, look at the evidence that is available, and sign on to the demands of architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth in demanding that we get a judicial investigation. I signed the, the petition for architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth uh, because I felt it was an organization trying to get it at the truth of what in fact actually happened, what brought those buildings down. So what I'm looking for is, is a new investigation where all of the original uh, information and tests and hypotheses are re-examined, as well as the ones that have surfaced since, the new ones, including the, the allegations of uh, controlled demolition. I don't think any of us are pointing fingers at this time. We're just saying, let's reopen it Let's look at it objectively, let's look at the evidence, not these fabricated computer models and hearsay and all these predetermined conclusions. Uh, let's really open it up again and um, investigate this thing properly and then come to conclusions. In my 37 years of experience as a structural engineer, I've never seen modes of failure such as have been exhibited in the case of these buildings, and that's why I feel that we need a new independent investigation to explain the destruction of these three buildings. I strongly support a, an independent investigation into what actually occurred. There are many problems, and in fact, as a forensic engineer, I can tell you that Unfortunately, the government has destroyed much of the evidence that we could do an appropriate investigation, that an investigation could be done that would be independent of the government, independent of all of the influences that obviously were in effect uh, during the NIST investigation. Based on the evidence available, I feel that we must demand a new investigation into the destruction of the World Trade Center towers and NIST itself. We need to have an investigation of NIST themselves. I believe that the reports that came out are not true. I believe there's a lot of, again, a lot of information that was omitted uh, blatantly or, or otherwise. 
I strongly feel that an international commission should be formed to look at this matter uh, in an unbiased manner and come to a conclusion that could be presented to the entire engineering community. We have a professional responsibility and I urge every engineer and architect and demolitions expert and anybody that has any knowledge in this field to examine the evidence and stand up and become because the rest of the world is depending upon us. I would like to see uh, a real investigation. I'd like to see I'd like to see people on the inside who really know what they're what happened. I'd like to see some of those uh, come out. There's some very good scientists, I'm sure, at NIST, and their life's work is getting distorted and uh, used for political purposes. What happened on 9-11 is not something that is just going to go away. This is very pertinent to us today. I wish to further the investigation, and I want to make a difference because I want this to be a safe and better place for my children. I signed the petition on the uh, Architect and Engineers 9-11 Truth uh, website mainly because I wanted to um, stand behind the families that lost people on 9-11. Uh, the 9-11 Truth movement was started by the families uh, that lost loved ones on that day and they were all out there alone screaming for help and our own country was ignoring them and ignoring their needs and not taking care of them the way we should have after that happened. We have not been told the truth. We deserve the truth and so do the victims. We need to come together again as a country. Uh, I believe that this one event split our country in half. And the only way we're going to come back together is to reopen the wound, talk about this in an open dialogue. Most of us who have lived with the events of 9-11 have, as a result, experienced some kind of trauma. It can be very difficult to come to terms with what actually happened at the World Trade Center. In fact, someone told me recently, I... Okay, that was the beginning of the next section, and I advise you to watch your programming schedules for cable access for the next couple weeks, because we're going to play this in its entirety, and it's like a little over two hours, so... Um, you, there's a lot more to come. There's a whole section on the Twin Towers and, and more. Um, but uh, I guess now what we're going to do is open up the phone lines. You can see right here, 503-288-4442 and 503-288-4448. And we're going to leave the phone lines open for the rest of this hour until 7 o'clock so you can tell us what you think about anything about 9-11. What do you think about all of the uh, nonsense, I call it nonsense, but the tremendous amount of money and pomp and circumstance around the 9-11 memorials that they're having? Right, right now, they were showing on C-SPAN uh, a little, just a couple hours ago, the Flight 93 memorial. But you know, none of these memorials are, are talking the truth. I mean, even the idea about uh, bin Laden, he was never charged with a crime involving 9-11. The FBI basically cleared him. And they, they took his name off the most wanted list because he's dead now. And somebody said, well, what about 9-11? And he said, we've never found any evidence connecting bin Laden to 9-11. And yet, let's do a mental flip-flop again. Remember when they invaded the compound of, uh, of bin Laden for the assassination of bin Laden? Well, they found laptops and be ready for this recovered information about 9-11 suddenly accusing, no, I bet he suddenly accuses the uh, uh, bin Laden and his group for sure for 9-11. But now we, come, oh, we still have our whole group here. Go ahead and show the rest of the group. This, feel free to address your questions to any of us. Do we have a camera that covers them all? Co pull back and try to get us all in one shot and we'll, we'll be able to handle the calls that way. But, um, well, anybody want to make a comment? You, you had some comments about what you saw in this video. Yeah, so um, I guess while we're waiting for callers. Oh, introduce yourself again. Sorry? Introduce, introduce yourself. yourself. Oh, sorry, I'm, okay. I'm Dave Fura. I'm actually an engineer, uh, a computer engineer. 
And you're with Architects um, and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. Member of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. Exactly. Okay. Um, so uh, I've seen a lot of this evidence before, and I, I, uh, I understand it can be a little bit hard to digest maybe on the first try. Caller. Sorry. Well, we have a caller. It's up to you to, okay, um, if you want to. Let me just uh, briefly say that there are a couple of topics that we can go over um, and elaborate more. Uh, some of the things were mentioned in the video, but some things were not. So um, after uh, the, we finish our caller, we'll get back to that. Um, go ahead, caller. We don't hear anything out here. Yes, hello? Oh, there we go. Hello. Uh, yes, um, I have a comment. Um, I'm a, a, a U.S. citizen of the United States, and I totally believe that 911 was an in in inside job. Uh, it's obvious that the buildings uh, didn't fall on their own, see, because fire, anybody that looks at the building, fire goes up. Fire doesn't go down. <laughs> That's a real good see, point. Right. I mean, it's <laughs> obvious. See, uh, fire does go up. Even when you light a match, the fire goes up. So it, that was a controlled demolition. And I believe that you, the United States did that, including Bush. I bet you Bush knew that, too. I, I believe that they were trying to get Saddam Hussein uh, in Iraq and... That was an excuse to get over there and to kill all those innocent people. And what the what United States is doing is trying to make America believe that, that all Muslims are bad and they're terrorists. This is a conspiracy against the Muslims to try to make them look like they're nothing but terrorists, yeah, and they have I totally believe that it's an inside, inside job, and it should be an investigation, but I don't know if we're going to have an investigation or not. Keep and, insisting on it. Right, and that's all I would like to say, and thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. You know, he brought up a real good point that the um, investigation, I mean, the, the, the con job about demonizing Muslims, that's the one thing, the, the Muslims to this event were like uh, Oswald was to the Kennedy assassination. He was just somebody to blame, and so are the Muslims. But that doesn't mean that the, Mos the lower level Muslims in the Al-Qaeda group, they might really think that they're freedom fighters for some cause. But you can be sure that the people that control Al-Qaeda were the CIA. The CIA with their money. I, I mean, that's... They, the Muhad Tadim is where it started. The uh, Freedom Fighters, when we set up in 1979, we set up the Freedom Fighters to fight Iran. And we set up Iran to fight them. We set up both sides. We sold more arms to both sides. And I think the whole point here is that the main thing, what are we doing? Why is 9-11, why was it, did it happen at all? I'm getting tongue-tied. Why did it happen at all? I believe because we had plans from the very beginning, and you can see it in writings of Kissinger and, and others, um, the, the whole point was to dominate the Middle East, kill anybody that could possibly resist our control of the natural resources. And it started way back in 91 with the Desert Storm. And by the way, I've been showing a, a series of, of clips from 20 years ago. A, rebroadcasts of a show by Ace Hayes called The Secret Government Seminar, and I was going to show a clip of that today, but we'll do that some other time, where he identifies the purpose as, you know, control of the Middle East resources, and that was 20 years ago he realized that. And right after we got done with all that, uh, the attacking in the Middle East involving, you know, Saddam Hussein and um, his attack of Kuwait, you know, saving Kuwait from the vicious attacks, um, we, everything kind of settled down and we didn't really have any more reason to be there. And I think that's the perfect timing for 9-11 to get our interest up again. Let's go back to the Middle East and make sure we dominate it. Anybody agree with me? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> and the latest operation we, in Libya, Oh. Uh, we've got known so-called Al-Qaeda fighters who uh, admit that they've come from Iraq 
fighting Americans, yeah. and now they're in Libya fighting I, I, uh, Gaddafi's government. I, I wrote that down right here that the um, we started out first, Al Qaeda was our enemy. They attacked us for 9 11. We got two phone calls waiting. Then the next thing that happened was they dropped the idea that Al Qaeda was our enemy, and now they're freedom fighters in Libya. Well, don't, so we gave them NATO and money and training and everything like that. And all of a sudden we turn around and now they're putting out warnings for this 9-11. Beware, Al Qaeda is going to attack again. Well, so now they're our enemies again. The only thing that they did was when they were fighting in Libya, we called them ex-Muhajadim. And then we dropped that real fast too because people understood that meant, oh, they're Al Qaeda. <laughs> so, it, you know, you got to understand that Al Qaeda is the the group of thugs that the glass company hires to go break windows at night so that the people have to call the glass company for new windows. And that's basically what's happening here. Yes. Well, let's take a call. Hello, caller. Hello. What comment have you got? <laughs> have I you got a comment that George W. Bush himself either had knowledge of it or was part of it. And because he wanted to get in there and get in control of the oil in Iran or over there in Iraq, and why why start a fight in uh, Afghanistan for whatever reason it began, and then go right straight to to Kuwait? Yeah, the nine eleven the nine eleven story. Before they what they started. <laughs> yeah, and I understand too that George Bush knew they had captured Osama bin Laden. Way back know, in 2001 or two. Yeah, right? said, no, we don't want him now. <laughs> well, turn him loose so he don't uh, spill the beans, you know? You gotta have a boogeyman out there all the time. If we capture the boogeyman, there's, everybody can relax. Yeah, and, and both, both George Bush and Cheney had assets or interests in war manufacturing Material. Oh, the Bushes were the Carlisle group. They sold to both sides, you know, yeah. mercilessly. Yeah. And furthermore, when we put out all our money to, for the fight in Iraq, and they had buku money on hand and never paid us back a dime. And well, furthermore, also, too, why did they have an outfit in there called Blackwater <laughs> fighting the same as our own troops and paying them probably three times what our military men were getting. That's a slap in the face for our military, for sure. Oh, yeah. And anything that Blackwater did, they never got collared or was never right, held accountable. Right, because our military laws yeah. didn't apply to contractors. Yeah. <laughs> God. There's yeah. a place in Southern California that Blackwater wanted to take possession of for training. Right, they wanted to start a training center and they got... Yeah, and they said no. We can't do that. That's uh, citizens are living there. Aren't they doing one in Texas now? But the thing was, in one in California, all of a sudden there was a fire, and the property is not worth anything anymore. Oh. And they got possession of it after all. Oh no! Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you, there's so much, you know, so many offshoots to follow on this. I, I can't believe how crooked them people are, and have gotten away with the crookedness that they've done to our home country. I agree. Yes. They have put our citizens in such a low profile now that oh. if we ever come out of it, it won't be in my day, and I'm 72. Oh. Right on. Well, thanks for your call, and uh, keep watching. We're going to be on again next week, and oh, uh, only I a one-hour live show on Channel 11 then. I am very interested in this program because when I saw a, a movie clip of that particular accident or should I say incident yeah <laughs> to the Trade Center uh -huh. that plane it showed it real close frame by frame that plane was not a passenger plane no oh, it's possible because we we don't really know where the planes were what what happened they went off screen for off the radar screen for a while and then came back and then there were yep. you know there's even some controversy that they don't have any record of two of the four planes even being scheduled for flights. Yeah, and a perfect excuse. What's with that? How does that happen? Saying, saying that that was a passenger plane. They now, they didn't have any of the terrorist names on the planes. Uh, you oh. know, so, but I've been on airplanes before, and I know that they take your name when you get on an airplane. So how did they yeah. do that? And some of them people <laughs> that 
that some of them people that do these kamikaze incidents uh, for Allah, as they call him, that was one of the, the comments made when the plane went into the Trade Center. Here's one for Allah. Well, that was reported by somebody on one of those, you know, controversial phone calls, right? No, this was, this was in that uh, CD that I watched that a friend gave me to see and prove that that was not a passenger plane that went into oh. the Trade Center. Hmm. And just before it hit, there was an explosion in the building. Yeah, there were some low, low. There were some explosions way down at ground level too before any plane. Right. Came. Yeah. I wondered if they ever took those out when they caught the guy that was down there planting them. <laughs> and 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 there were also explosions on on yeah. on Building Seven before it fell, which was and a one third building. here a while back uh, was coming up the eastern seaboard. They pulled him over for whatever incident and checked his car, and he had. Buku explosives in his car. There were multiple bands found with explosives that day, and they, they never got followed up on. They fell in the memory hole. Yeah. Well, it's all cover up. That's why. Yep. Yes. And well, like we got another did. caller, so we're going to okay. move on. But hey. watch our show next week, and if you find out the exact name of that video, call us next week and let us know. We want to watch it too. I, I will see. Can I find? I see the guy that they gave to me to watch every now and then, and I'll see if I can catch him again. Cool. Thank Thanks you. a lot. You betcha, and uh, I can call this same number and, and get your address. Well, and when, to you. when we're on TV, yeah. But you could um, you could mail it to 2766 oh, wait, 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 Northeast right Graham. There. That's the address of Portland Community Media. Put it okay, in. Okay, and that address again is what? 2766 Northeast Graham, Portland, Oregon. and uh, Northeast Martin Luther King Boulevard. You just grabbed oh, okay. North Oh, it is Northeast MLK, sorry. It's on Graham and MLK, so it's 2766 Northeast MLK. My mistake. I'm glad you caught that. Zip code? Uh, 97212, I think. I'm not sure. Okay. I think, I think I'm right. <laughs> okay, well, thanks a lot. You betcha, and uh, no particular address is to, just attention. Oh, you can say to Bill Olson or to 9-11. They'll get, they'll get me one way or okay. another. I'll have it down, attention, Bill Olson, 9-1-11. Thank you. Oh, you, you bet you. When I find it, I'll certainly send it to that'd you. That would be great. I appreciate it. You Anybody bet, else that has in, info they'd like to send us, too, that, that would be good, too. Um, we got one more call. Waiting, I think, right? Hi. Hello. Go ahead. Yeah, hey, I've watched your show a few times, and I really appreciate it, especially what you guys are doing tonight. Uh, I've spent a good amount of the day shaking my head because... <laughs> uh, I saw Bush earlier, and for some reason I thought, you know, I had to check the TV schedule to see if I wasn't watching the Manchurian Candidate. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, there's so much stuff about this going on, it just still makes me sick. And, I mean, still, I'm sure David Copperfield would love to know how they flew a plane into the uh, Pentagon and nobody saw it. <laughs> there's no video on it. I'm sure he'd like to have something that good in his act. And when George Bush can take a helium balloon outside and let go of it and it falls down and hits the ground, that's the day that I'm going to believe what they're saying <laughs> about this 911 stuff. It's just so, so backward. I, you know what? If, if I was just to base my Americanism on our leaders and what they expect us to believe surrounding this, I would be embarrassed and I would get to Canada on a skateboard if I had <laughs> it. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. I mean, you shouldn't have to be ashamed of the country you live in, and it's almost like they're forcing us to be that way because what are the options? You either have to believe them and be an idiot, <laughs> or you have to not believe them and challenge it and have all these people look at you like, oh, man, come on. You know, oh, but lies. that's changing. It, that's changing. Yeah, you know, and, and you you drew a you drew a thing to that, uh, or something that I saw in that clip. They, a guy made a point that not a lot of people are aware of is that that 9/11 Truth movement was started by the families of the victims, and that yes. is something that makes a, the bottom line difference. You know, it's not just some kooks out there who are like. You know, oh, we got to invent a new conspiracy this week. No, <laughs> but you know, it's like they want you to be, you know, they want you to be smart enough to figure out your taxes to the penny. 
But when it comes to looking at facts and what you can see in front of your eyes and what co uh, honest people in this country all get, you know, get together and say, and it's like, oh, no, you kooks, you know, yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. You're a nut. Well, I don't see anybody calling me a nut on April 15th. So <laughs> I, I, I just want to congratulate you guys for being here especially today. And I was going to ask you because I tuned in a little bit late in the program, and I wondered if there was anybody... Uh, this might be my stupid question for the week, but I'm wondering if there's anybody getting together uh, tomorrow morning for, you know, just kind of stand up for this side of things anyway. Perfect. Well, and well, from well, that we can take it away. We do have a... Well, we, um, the, the group Architects, Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth is having a screening of, of the video, the two-hour video, and a discussion afterwards at the Hillsdale Library. Up here in in, uh, in Southwest Portland, and the address for that is 1525 Southwest Sunset Boulevard. Again, it's okay. the Hillsdale Library in Portland, and and we'd love to have you come and you know help help discuss the point. Um, we're definitely going to be having more upcoming events um, and, and trying to push the issue more, especially in, in the year where Bin Laden was murdered, and yet the FBI never charged him for 9/11. You know, we we have those contradictory facts that we really want to push the audience and push their perception of 9-11, especially with the presidential elections happening next year. Yeah, well, I'm trying to actually talk to a couple of friends, and I told them I'd let them know if I found out anything that was going on, so maybe we could go, and, uh, yes. you know, I told them, you know, and one of them, you know, he's not really decided, I said, you know, you hang out with people who know this stuff and find out, and you investigate, and that's how you find this stuff out. Right. If you just listen to the government, it's like trying to play chess with somebody on a spinning chessboard. You're not going to get anywhere. So yeah, I appreciate the information, what you guys are doing, and uh, yeah, I, 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 I shouldn't be. I mean, a show like this is perfect, Beyonce, but it would have been a disappointing surprise if nothing came on like this, and there you guys are, and it uh, kind of lifts me up to see right. that, so thanks a lot. Thank yeah. you for calling. And, okay, and, have a good one, Bob. And, and remember to come tomorrow at the Hillsdale Library from 2 to 4. Right. Now, there's also a couple of other events tomorrow. Uh, from noon until I believe six in the evening at Colonel Summers Park on 20th and Belmont, Southeast Portland, the 9-11 uh, Truth Alliance, Portland 9-11 Truth Alliance is having a potluck uh, gathering for uh, anyone who's interested to come and uh, uh, talk about 9-11 Truth. Also, tomorrow evening, I'm not quite sure the time uh, Clyde Lewis has his radio show mm -hmm. at a place called Bing's, I believe, downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm afraid I can't give you the location or the specific time on that. I, uh, it, and I believe it's Bing, B-I-N-G, Bing Lounge. Okay. Bing Lounge in, in Portland. And call them for times, maybe. Yeah. And also, caller, always remember that it's better to be called an idiot than to be an idiot. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you can either get panel opinions or take more calls. It's up to you. Well, we can take more calls, but just a second. Um, I was going to say that, you know, you pointed out when we first started the show that people are now not reacting negatively to us. They're, they're act, reacting positively. They used to shout us down. They used to call us names. Now they seek out what we have to say. I mean, it's a big change. Yeah, and, and I think it has a lot to do with the fact that, um, you know, oh, uh, that President Obama really let Bush and Cheney slide. You know, oh, he never yeah. pushed the issue. We're only going to look forward. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're not going to reflect on the past. We're just going to look forward, and we need to reflect on the past. Yeah, we I think I'll go rob a bank, and then when they arrest me, I'll tell them, no, we're only going to look forward. You can look back. That, that bank robbery was in the past. You can't arrest me for that now. We're going to look forward. And we have to look pretty far back in the past because there's plenty of evidence that shows that it wasn't just the Bush administration that was responsible for 9-11. This was planned before Bush ever came in office. Absolutely. You know, there's uh, plenty of documents for the project for the New American Century and others that uh, yeah. talk about the plans for 9-11. And the documentation for uh, the uh, use of false flag attacks uh, to promote uh, war, aggressive war and imperialism goes way back. Virtually and every war we've had has been started that way. And what we're seeing now with Obama, who had all this promise of change, 
its uh, perpetuation yes. of the Bush policies and the uh, establishment uh, elitist imperialist policies. Uh, Not just the perpetuation, but the amplification of those policies. The amplification oh. of those policies. So it's an endemic problem. It's not something that we're going to uh, solve by voting in uh, uh, a new president who is vetted and controlled by the same uh, elitist establishment. Uh, I heard someone say uh, a few days ago that the problem we have in America is uh, rogue elements in, in the government. Uh, well, actually, I disagree with that. I think what we have is a rogue establishment our corporate leaders and our uh, government leaders and the leaders of the major parties are all corrupt and they're all rogue. And so it's really a problem of the upper tier of uh, the leadership in uh, commerce and uh, politics and the military uh, that uh, are a tyranny. Yeah, I wanted to point out that uh They've been telling the official lies over and over again, even though many of those lies have been officially discounted by official people, not just 9-11 nutcases. Think about this, the um, telephone calls, they're repeating the nonsense for the, nine, the Flight 93 Memorial. They were going through the, the whole script of the telephone calls and, you know, from Barbara Olson and so on. And the FBI said in the, or the 2006 Mosali trial that there were no phone calls completed from any of the flights. Oh. That was what the FBI said. Now, that was it, it, under oath in a trial. And now they're back to contradicting that? It's just plain blatant lies in your face. And the reason that they can get away with it is because they are. They're just doing it over and over again, repeating everything, and nothing else is getting through. If you looked at every channel, every one of them is talking about the official story, and they're just skirting around the bad Muslims. They aren't mentioning the Muslims, but at the same time, remember, this is the same news media that kind of almost in the same breath, they said, they did 9-11. And then, right after that, without making any changes, they said, and now they want to build a mosque. What? They is not the same they, but our media doesn't differentiate. And so we're building up this scapegoat called Islam. And, you know, it should be pretty obvious that we are ripping through the world of Islam and completely devastating. It just happens that they happen to be where we want our, all those resources. Well, we have another caller waiting. Uh, yes, I just have two quick questions, and I'm just going to ask them to all your panels, and then I'm just going to listen to your comments off the air, if that's okay. Sure. If you have time for both of them. But my first question is about Flight 93, the one that's, that uh, crashed in Pennsylvania. Uh, has there been any evidence of where that plane was supposedly headed? I've heard some say maybe the White House. Personally, to me, if it hit the White House, that would have maybe that would have uh, been something... Uh, maybe like an ace in their car even more to maybe bring a martial law in the whole country. I don't know. Yeah, uh, so I don't know if, if you had any information on your guests about new information on uh, Flight 93. And then my other question is, has any of this evidence uh, been presented to President Obama? Uh, does he know anything about the, um, the uh, what do you call it, the petition? Uh, and Michelle Obama, has she, uh, is there any chance of, being able to uh, present both of them with this information and, and to get their comments about it. So I'll, I'll take your uh, thoughts off the air. Thank you very much. I enjoy the show. Well, I'll take the first part of your question, caller, about Flight 93, and then the remainder of your question, uh, if uh, some of the panel members can try to remember, uh, can perhaps address that. And about Flight 93, again, I'll reiterate what uh, Bill said here just a minute ago about the bogus phone calls, the cell phone calls that were supposedly made uh, from Flight 93. Let's roll. Let's roll that. and all the rest of it. It didn't happen. It, it didn't happen. The FBI testified in the Masawe trial that it didn't happen. So the official story now, uh, at least from the FBI, is that it didn't happen. The phone calls were never made. So 
And add to that fact that many experts have testified that uh, phone calls from cell phones from airliners in 2001 were not technologically possible at the time. Uh, that may have changed in the interim, but back in 2001, you could not successfully make a uh, private cell phone call from uh, an airliner. So what's more, uh, you ask about the destination, the possible destination of Flight 93 as a, uh, a, weapon. a weapon, as a hijacked plane. Well, there's plenty of evidence that there was no Flight 93. Like the other 9-11 um, airliners, the four airliners, there are plenty of anomalies in those flights having to do with their very existence, the question of their very existence. And I'll mention just one of those, the fact that every airliner that ever makes a flight anywhere uh, the uh, pilot and co-pilot put together a bundle of papers that includes a, a flight manifest and also uh, a list of uh, uh, qualities and conditions of the plane which they put into a manila envelope uh, and, uh, uh, and, and leave uh, with the uh, uh, airfield before they fly uh, uh, on their flight. Uh, none of those exist for those four airplanes. Uh, and there's, there's more to show that uh, uh, something is very strange about those four uh, supposed flights on 9-11. But back to f Flight 93 specifically, uh, a critical examination of the alleged crash site at Shanksville <laughs> in Pennsylvania shows that uh, there's uh, no serious evidence of a plane being there at all that there was probably no plane crash because there's no plane wreckage there. Uh, the official version tells us that the plane, after being uh, uh, the uh, takeover attempt by some of the passengers, the alleged takeover attempt, which is actually an unknown since there were no phone calls and there's no way that we would know that that actually happened. So it's a fairy tale to begin with, but the official story tells us that uh, following that attempt to take over the uh, uh, alleged uh, hijacker pilot uh, nosedived the plane into this Shanksville field. And, and just happened to hit a mine shaft. And just, it, the ground was so soft and boggy there that the plane disappeared intact into the ground, wings, tail and all, and the ground just swallowed it up in, in some kind of biblical fashion. What I, and then, I was just going to say, I, what I like is any other plane crash, they assemble all the wreckage and try to find out yes. what happened. And this one, it went down a mine shaft. It must have been too deep for them to go. They can dig the mine shaft, but they can't go down the mine shaft for airplane parts, I guess. Well, and another absurdity about that. That's <laughs> just crazy. Uh, there, you know, there, there are a number of absolute contradictions in the uh, Flight 93 story. And one of them is that uh, first we're told that the uh, Flight 93 Shanksville site was an old open pit mine. And, you know, open pit mines do not have shafts. Right. And, uh, <laughs> s but supposedly this, this open pit mine had soft soil, which is why the plane disappeared underground, entirely underground. Uh, and then, uh, in order to explain how uh, they were able to go in there and excavate this stuff out, uh, the, the plane, they, the government changed the story to say that it went into a shaft, which as I said, there's no shafts in an open pit mine. Uh, apparently, what the government says is that within two weeks, this entire airplane had been excavated out of the hole in Shanksville, and they recovered 97% uh, of it. Uh, where? It, yes, and where <laughs> is it? There, you know, every, uh, in my 60 years of living, I've heard about many plane crashes, and every time there's been a major plane crash uh, in the uh, 50s or the 60s or the 70s or even the 80s, uh, uh, even the 90s, usually there would be a hangar somewhere where the FAA uh, was reassembling the, the every last bit they could collect from that plane in, in uh, microscopic detail uh, with uh, 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 examining it with a fine-tooth comb. The fact is that the FAA 
investigates every plane crash in America. And that's not just commercial airliners, that's also the um, small planes, the single pilot planes. The FAA of the United States goes to foreign countries and investigates airliner crashes, even if it's not an American carrier. So the ironic thing, the absurd thing, is that the four 9-11 flights, those four airliners, are the first and only plane crashes in US uh, history, or at least in the history of the FAA, to not be investigated by the FAA. Yeah. The FAA has had no investigation of those planes. Uh, now, back to Flight 93, uh, in addition to the fact that there's uh, no debris uh, in the uh, Shanksville field, and there's no debris being investigated in a warehouse somewhere. There's a little story that came out where a Air Force pilot claimed to have shot the, the Flight 93 down before it got to Shanksville. And in fact, apparently this pilot was given a commendation, which shows that somebody in the Air Force feels that uh, this actually did happen, that the plane was shot down. Well, let me tell you, you can't have it both ways. Either the plane nosedived into the field intact, which the official story, or the uh, plane was shot down. We but you can't have both. And the, the government is apparently allowing both of these stories to yeah. continue yeah. with a, 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 some endorsement from the Air Force about the shoot down. And remember, there was a debris field that was, yeah. what, seven or eight miles on that one? But you know, actually, there was a rumor of a debris field. But what I have never seen, is there's no documentation or photographs of the debris oh, in this okay. alleged uh, uh, debris field. From, and from and you know, down. from Lockerbie, from the Lockerbie Did bombing. Didn't they find an engine a long way away? Well, they say they found an engine oh, a long okay, way well. away. And, but uh, there's been no photography of it. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, no eyewitness accounts of them actually picking this stuff up. And let me tell you from Lockerbie, we know that when a plane uh, ec uh, explodes in midair or has a, a disintegration they, in midair, they went it to leaves the bottom a, of the ocean to get it. Oh yeah. well, and there, there's debris everywhere. If 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 that plane had been uh, rocketed and shot down and and blew up mm -hmm. and came apart over Pennsylvania over a seven mile area or any mile area, uh, mm -hmm. there'd be people going around finding junk from it to this day in those woods and those fields I, we got to check into but there that. was no such thing keep in mind is we're kind of talking about some of the peripheral events um, you know we know that the evidence of the buildings being destroyed by controlled demolition is solid enough that that alone calls for a new investigation this other stuff is all gee whiz and it'll be nice to find out what really happened if we get an investigation but there's so much gee whiz and and controversy to it it it's not what we're basing our argument on. We're just discussing it. Do you agree with that? I mean, I, right. I, and, um, I think things like David Chandler and, and um, Richard Gage's presentations are far more persuasive than, than just thinking about what might have happened. For your second question, caller, um, oh, you're yeah. asking <laughs> about whether Obama Get back to that. Uh, knows, uh, I think, about the petition that is being signed by people and uh, request for a new investigation. Uh, can't say for sure, but you have to assume that he knows uh, what's going on with the 9-11 Truth Movement. Um, but to expect that o Obama is going to do anything different than Bush, uh, I think is naive now because we've already seen that he has done nothing different than Bush. So in certain areas he is quite different than Bush, but in some other areas he is exactly the same. You know, and people are struggling to explain the disconnect between, you know, all the rhetoric that we heard from Obama that was so inspiring before the election and what he turned out to do when he got into power. What's that disconnect? Well, a show that I'm showing the 20-year replays of, the Ace Hayes Secret Government Seminars, um, one of the things that he mentioned was um, it's a, it blows your mind if you try to think of them as real, honest people who are, you know, doing what they say or trying to or whatever, and it doesn't connect because they do completely the opposite of what they say. But if you think of them as actors playing a part, you know, Obama isn't the top man in our power structure. He's, he's doing the bidding of the people who are in power, probably Wall Street. Um, but the point is, uh, you can't 
look at it like he's an honest human being in a situation and being pulled every which way. He's an actor reading a script. Now you can understand it. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't blow your mind now. <laughs> That's the way I've found to deal with it in my head, anyway. <laughs> um, well, t just to, to, to try and, and inject a sense of optimism in all of this, I do want to say that um, former Senator Mike Ravel, who introduced the Pentagon Papers um, b back in the 70s, um, he, is, he just got a hold of, of, of the Portland 9-11 Truth Alliance in the last month, and he is try he's trying to start a petition campaign in both the state of Massachusetts and in the state of Oregon to start to initiate the process of a new investigation. We and, have an initiative petition and he wants to get that on the ballot for 2012 so at least it's talked about. Yes, yes. And so, you know, and so we, Obama will be hearing about it in one way or another, we're hoping. Right. So, you know, so, so just know that there is a movement out there. Please try and be a part of it because we do want to. You know, I mean, the winds of change have definitely changed, and um, people are a lot more open to thinking that 9/11 was a bit of an inside job and not just what we've been brought to to you know to think. And in the year again that, and in the year that Osama was assassinated, um, in light of the fact that the FBI never even charged him for 9/11, um, you know, we really really need to question things. And I want to you know echo the uh, the case for optimism here. Um, in the past two or three years, there have been a couple of major events um, that have not been reported by the mainstream media. Uh, in the spring of 2009 is when the uh, peer-reviewed paper was published that described nanothermite in the World Trade Center dust. Uh, as of now, there's been no challenge to that paper. So the scientific community believes that there was nanothermite in the World Trade Center dust. Uh, before that, in 2008, we had uh, the, 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 finally the issuing of the report on the World Trade Center 7 collapse, which we didn't talk about today or see today. But uh, in the uh, technical briefing for the draft report, uh, the NIST basically said that Building 7 did not come down in free fall. And they also said that it couldn't come down in free fall. It's impossible if you have a fire caused collapse. However, they were challenged by a, a physics high school teacher who uh, analyzed the video and proved that it did come down in free fall for two and a half seconds. Uh, uh, they were, this was embarrassed by this and they finally changed their, their, uh, their story in the final report which came out in November or December of 2008. Um, and they said that it did indeed come down in free fall and they didn't explain how that was consistent yeah, with the previous the <laughs> uh, statement, which was that free fall is impossible if you have a fire cause collapse. They were right on that part. Sorry? They were correct. They were correct initially. They were, they were quite correct when they said that that's inconsistent with a fire cause yeah, collapse. Yeah, fire couldn't cause that. They were and correct. That, that <laughs> also was not reported in anywhere in the mainstream media, and that was a huge, huge result. Uh, and going along with... Uh, uh, with the previous work that had been done, um, discovering the uh, evidence of the molten metal, which is completely inconsistent with a fire cause collapse, but is consistent with nanothermite. The presence of the explosions, which again is consistent with nanothermite and demolition, but not with the fire cause collapse. Um, and, and several other things that are very concrete uh, evidence that uh, demolition was used and doesn't require being a conspiracy theorist to understand that. It just <laughs> takes anybody with an open mind looking at the evidence will conclude uh, at least that it's very like more likely that there was a controlled demolition than a fire cause collapse. If not, that that's proof positive and certainly that a new investigation is required. So I urge everybody who's watching the show to go to the AE 911 Truth website, AE 911 Truth.org. Look at the evidence there, and uh, if you're so inclined, to sign the petition. Thank you. And and just to stress some facts about the the design of the the twin towers. The des the the twin towers when they were originally constructed, they were designed to withstand the impact of a 707, and actually one or multiple planes crashing into the structure itself at any point in the building. So. It, it was designed, the buildings were designed to withstand the impact of a 707. Which and they've is, continually downplayed that so it fits the story. 
Yes, and um, and and mind you, the build the towers, 110 story towers, both towers, they fell at about 10 seconds. One was nine something seconds, and the other was 10 something seconds. So say that they fell in, in 10 or 11 seconds. Um, there was absolutely no structural resistance in the lower levels. Um, it was as if a billiard ball was dropped from the top of each of those towers, and it would take a billiard ball about 10 seconds to reach the bottom, experiencing absolutely no resistance. So basically, those buildings fell as fast as a billiard ball w would fall if it had been let go from the roof of those buildings. And so it's just, it's, it's impossible for there to have been no structural resistance when the core of those buildings were designed to withstand the impact of multiple 707s um, impacting it at any level. And besides, the point. fire was on the top. Why weren't the lower structure completely intact with their full strength? How come they had weakened strength? Something? Right. And, you know, and yeah. this, Steve, really, you, you get, uh, the, you need the full story, you need to actually understand what NIST says. And NIST says that the, f the, the fire from the air aircraft, the, uh, the fuel from the aircraft, was consumed within 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah, the, that, uh, the South Tower with, was standing for about 100 minutes after it was struck by an airplane. Uh, as it was pointed out in the video, the smoke coming out of both towers was black, which indicates that there wasn't enough oxygen to cause the maximum heat of that fire, so it was a, a low temperature fire, relatively. Uh, the, the, the first tower to fall was the second tower to be hit. It lasted for about 100 uh, minutes. The fire was reportedly going out. Newspaper, news uh, cast were saying, and this is on the web, that it looks like the fire department has pretty much got this fire under control. Right, they and, reported and then, they had made it to floor 70. And then right after that, with two lines, yeah. it came down. I think what happened was they, they saw the official story going out the window and they had to detonate before the fire department put it out. And I think somebody did that just to, for yep. that. Well, a, a fire chief, like on the 70, 70th floor of one of those buildings, um, he, he literally um, called down and said that they would only, it would only require two lines to yeah. put out the fire. Two, two hoses. Or right. two hoses to, yeah. to put Line. out the fire. And then, you know, within minutes, uh, we experienced complete structural collapse on those buildings. Okay, we only have two and a half minutes left. Was there another caller? Okay, let's take that caller. Go ahead, caller. Hello? Hello. Yeah, you got yeah. two two minutes. Yeah, I think I think what, what you're having hammering on the point, but what you really need to realize is that the only ones that are going to win in any of this situation are the oligarchs and the bankers that are doing this have been happening for years. Right, those and are the puppet the masters. All the presidential training from the fifties on down the pipe and watch the pendulum play. It doesn't matter if it's red or blue, it's the same crap anyway you look at it. But if you remember, connect the dots between old Bush to young Bush. And the war he started, the war he didn't finish, and young Bush is going to come into it. And the World Trade Center was a perfect opportunity because in 93 it was bombed, if you remember, the car bombed. Right. Six By the way, that was an out. FBI plot. And six, yes. six floors got taken out, and nobody was good enough to engineer a building to stay up that tall, that long. It was on landfill anyway, but that land they built on was landfill. And the train goes underneath it, which makes it shaky landfill. So they had to take it down because the thing was going to come down anyhow. So, perfect opportunity to get, oh, well, we'll take it down and then we'll blame, we'll, oh, we'll blame those people that put the, the bales over their heads because they're spooky and we don't know anything <laughs> about them. And they get the oil we want. Bingo. Yeah, there you and go. That's, that's really the bottom line. Well, thanks, caller. And um, we got one minute left. Anybody want to say anything? Um, just, just as a reminder, um, th both buildings were experiencing a six-month renovation to their elevator systems prior to them going down. Um, they weren't, a you know, if they weren't able to have access to the outer structural elements, they possibly packed the internal columns with explosives because... So much explosives that it created the biggest type of detonation you ever saw. You know, that's why they say um, it wasn't controlled demolition because it started at the top. Um, because <laughs> structural elements were ejected laterally and not vertically. You know, there, there were, were some ejected up and out. Yes, That's right. yes, and you know, and if it was fire, then everything would have gone with gravity and would have gone down. Right. There would have been no need for lateral explosions of structural members. 
Right, that's that's proof right there that something else was involved. Hey, well, watch on the 17th, and we're going to show the uh, World Trade Center 7 part of this documentary that we started the, today's show with. So see you on the 17th next week on Channel 11. And, and remember that at the Hillsdale Library tomorrow, um, we'll be having a screening and a discussion on this. Um, so please come uh, from 2 to 4. It's 1525 Southwest Sunset Boulevard. Thank <laughs> we're, you. We're out. <laughs>